The Act 19 is just around the corner and it contains a lot of promising changes. Let's look at it in detail. The biggest feature that would be included in version 19 is the React Compiler. Basically, if you want to prevent unnecessary renders, you can use some memoization techniques like memo, use callback or use memo. But it adds a lot of clutter in your code and even if you do all that, there is no guarantee that everything is perfectly memoized. React Compiler would basically solve this issue. You won't need all these memoization functions and hooks and React itself will re-render only the right portion of the UI that needs to be re-rendered. And this would make our app much faster than it normally is. The next features that would be implemented in React 19 are already present in Next 14, but I will quickly go through them so that you can know about all the features that would come in React 19. The first thing is form actions. So form actions are basically a way of calling a function when a form is submitted. And you can do that by passing a function in the action prop of the form tag. You can also run server side code inside this action function. And that is why we can also call them server actions if that is the case. As you can see here, I have this form tag and inside action, I have an async function. Here I'm basically getting the message from the form data. And basically I am sending an API request to the backend to add that particular to do. Now this is a client only action, but you can also write server side code here and you can do that using the use server directive. And this is what an action looks like. We can also use some hooks which are introduced in Rack 19 to be used along server actions like use form status, use optimistic, etc. Use optimistic is basically used for showing optimistic updates. It takes two params. One is the initial data and there is another function and it would be used to aggregate the current data and whatever data we submitted in the form right now. So here I have these to do's which I am mapping here and here inside the action I am calling this add optimistic to do function which basically got returned from use optimistic. When this particular function would be called here I am passing the message which I am getting from this input field. This message would go here and I am appending this message to the to do's and basically what would happen is these to do's would get the appended result. So if I go here and type A and then I type B. You can see that optimistic updates are working fine and adding data that I am adding in this particular field and submitting is being appended to the list. And I can use this hook to show optimistic updates. Another useful hook is the use form status hook. Use form status hook basically tells us certain information about the status of the form submission. When I do this, you can see that I get certain information regarding form submission. Right now, I only want to get the pending. So pending would change to true whenever the form is currently submitting. So if I am making a call inside the form action during that time, this pending would be true. So I can use this pending variable to disable the button or show some other text on the button. So here I have an example. I can type anything. I can click on submit and during the submission process, you can see that I'm using the pending variable to make the button disabled and change the button text from submit to submitting. If you want to understand the use optimistic and use form status hooks in detail, I have made a separate tutorial for that, which I will link in the iCard and also I will put the link in the description. Now also another update, which is one of the biggest update in React 19 would be the use hook. Use hook can be used to read any promise or context. So here in this case, I have a promise. I am resolving the promise with some data. Whenever this particular promise would resolve, it would return the resolved data in this data variable and then I'm showing it here. So if I refresh, you will see that I am showing a loading state and then some data, which is basically what I'm passing to the resolve function. Now, how I'm showing the loading state, I'm doing that using the suspense boundary. So if I wrap the child, which is using the use hook, it would suspend whenever the promise is pending and the suspense boundary would go away when the promise gets resolved and it would show the data. Similarly, if the promise rejects, I can wrap the particular component which is using the use hook with the error boundary component and if the promise rejects, it will show the fallback component from the error boundary. So if I refresh now, you can see that it shows loading but then it shows the something went wrong component which I have passed in the error boundary component. Also, as I told before, you can use this use hook to read any context as well and you don't need to use the use context hook. Again, if you want to know about the use hook in detail, I have a full separate tutorial about it. So if you want to watch that, I will link it in the iCard as well and you can also check out the description. Also, the use client and use server directives. So if there is a file which you want to run the server, you will basically write use server on the top of that file. And if you want to tell React that this particular file should render on the client only and not on the server, then you would write use client on the top. This feature is already present in Next 13. So if you are using Next 13 app router, you know that you can use this. 
but in react it would come in react 19 so that is it for the tutorial i am pretty sure you will learn a lot about what is coming in react 19 and i am sure you are excited about what's to come what specific feature are you most excited about from react 19 do comment down below if you have any questions you can comment down below as well as always like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video bye